Good morning, everyone. Welcome to all of our new and uh, regular attendees to our webinar, Risk Management for Oil and Gas Projects. My name is Michael Tromper. I'm one of the principals here at Intaver Institute. I've been in, in the area of project and risk management and software development for almost 20 years. Generally, uh, the webinars are fairly informal presentations on popular topics or features that our users, users have asked us about. A uh, common question that we receive on a regular basis is, while I understand what the software can do, uh, how are other companies actually using it? Um, it's an interesting question. And as we have different versions of the software, and there's a fairly wide variety of specific workflows that we are aware of. Uh, in this case, we're going to be looking at a case study and how you can perform integrated cost and schedule risk analysis and management on oil and gas project, and how it can be used to identify and manage the most important project risks. Before we start, I just want to uh, like to go over some housekeeping, as it's called, about how you can participate or in the webinar. Hopefully you see this when you've uh, logged in. There, you should see a pane up there. I uh, highly recommend that you use your computers, microphone, and speakers, basically the speakers at this point. Um, the quality tends to be better than using the telephone. Uh, questions? Uh, if you have questions uh, either regarding uh, how uh, sound or video or um, issues uh, questions about the actual webinar itself, you can answer them in the questions pane. Uh, unless they are actual technical issues that we may be able to resolve uh, at the time, <clears throat> we will uh, I'll hold off and we'll have a, we can have a QA and uh, a at the end of the session. Uh, generally, it doesn't take too long. Um, the session itself should, the uh, webinar itself should run about 30 to 35 minutes. So we won't take up too much of your time today. So quick introduction, if you uh, are unaware or it's first time coming into the webinar, uh, this is, a, we're in Tabor Institute. Uh, we were established in 2002. Uh, we released our first version of the software in 2004. Uh, currently, we're on version 7, which was released uh, last year, and uh, we will be coming out with a new version in hopefully Q4 of uh, 2018. So Risky Project, it's a full project risk management life cycle. It has an integrated risk register with risk matrix with planning, and we combine this with uh, both qualitative and quantitative, uh, quantitative Monte Carlo cost and schedule risk analysis. Uh, you can see a sort of a slight uh, a, a view of some of our clients that we have. We're sort of heavily uh, skewed towards uh, engineering, uh, lots of aerospace, and some energy companies, and uh, what we call new product development. So let's take a look at what's happening in uh, the oil and gas business. This chart shows the basically the range of low of uh, full cycle cost for U.S. oil. Full cycle costs include capital, op costs, basis differential, royalties and taxes, producers return, and G&A. As you can see, there is a significant uncertainty in cost, which is shown with the bars, low bars, and up to the high bars. Moreover, the share of project uncertainties is growing in comparison to other uncertainties, such as geological. Project cost and schedule analysis is one of the critical components in the corporate portfolio management process and mostly affects capital costs, which together with prices, production, and royalties 
is an input to the economic evaluation of oil and gas projects. Risk can have multiple impacts. For example, risk could be, could be due to a safety concern. So while it, it could affect safety, it will also impact reputation, cost, and schedule. These risk impacts of project cost and schedule must be analyzed consistently for all projects in the portfolio and propagate towards cor corporate portfolio management. Capital cost is about 40% of all costs. This cost can be affected by project risks. And these risks can significantly increase costs due to project delays and other cost escalations. Project, project risks may increase costs more than 30%, especially for new plays where development has just started. Risks for ex exploration projects can be even higher. While this is an illustrative example, actual numbers can be different. Uh, however, based on our experience of leading producers, proper risk planning can reduce full cycle costs by as much as 20 to 50 cents per unit. Common critical project risks we have listed here, uh, they could be regulatory uh, and with the mitigations, uh, supplier and supplies, equipment and materials, weather and personnel. Ident identifying and managing those risks which are critical to your project is key. How much budget and schedule exposure is there due to project risks? Which risks are the most critical? Which risks are threats? Which risks are opportunities? How could they affect cost and schedule and eventually profitability of your project? Traditional methods of project analysis use indirect methods to attempt to identify critical risks. Qualitative methods are the most subjective and prioritization of risks is unclear as it does not take into account the project schedule and cost models. Traditional quantitative methods model risks indirectly. Root causes of project uncertainty are unclear a task may be critical, but may be affected by several risk factors. Often schedule risk is ignored as the priority is minimizing cost risk. However, the cliche, time is money, is particularly relevant in this context as time dependent cost risk is often the main driver in cost uncertainty and budget overruns. The most accurate method for assessing cost risk is to include schedule-driven costs or time-dependent costs as part of the analysis. This requires resource-loaded schedules that include resource rates and allocations. Risky project simplifies this process with the risk events approach. It has two major components, a risk register and a scheduling engine. Schedule includes schedule costs and resources. Risks are defined by probability and impact on cost and schedule. Risks are then assigned to the project activities and resources and this process allows you to quickly identify cost and schedule uncertainty at both the project and activity level and prior, prioritize risk base on their impact on cost or schedule. So we'll look at our case study of project 
of drilling three wells to show how we can implement this process. This is a realistic project, drilling three horizontal, horizontal gas wells from one pad in Western Canada. Micro seismic monitoring is used. Each well has from eight, has from eight to 12 fracks. One walking rig is used for all three wells. Schedule is resource loaded and includes costs. The first step is to look, either load or create a project schedule with activities, resources, and a precedent network. Precedent network means the start and finish uh, constraints or relationships between activities. Because this exercise is to identify, analyze, and manage the impacts of critical project risk, the schedule does not have to be described or model down to the lowest level, but should have enough information that you can adequately model the impact of project risks on the estimated costs and durations. What adequately means in this context uh, is a judgment call, and that needs to be defined at an organizational level. We need enough information that we can uh, get a good enough understanding of how they could affect cost or, and schedule, project cost and schedule. Adding more detail uh, at this point probably won't add, it, uh, addi add additional value. Um, I do understand that when once a project is under, if you have a larger project that's running for a long, longer period of time, having more detail uh, might give you a better understanding of what impacts a delay are going to have on the expected uh, finish dates. Uh, but at this point, uh, for using this risk driver approach or risk event approach, uh, having as simple, as, as simple a model as possible uh, will probably be very helpful and allows you to update it e easily to update and maintain that model. Uh, we also have, we have a schedule with resources. I'm just actually, let's go back just so we can look. So we do have this schedule that has, a, it's a very simple one for this purposes, but you can also see that we've added these resources. We have a drilling crew and we have completion crews and each one of those actually has a, a rate associated, an hourly rate associated with them, which will drive our time dependent costs. Costs. Uh, <clears throat> We call them fixed costs that are associated with specific activities. Uh, fixed costs are used to model costs that are time independent. That is, they don't, they are not affected uh, by how long the activity will take place. These costs can also be risks as part of the analysis. In addition to the schedule, we have a risk register. In the risk register, we can identify risks. Uh, once you have a uh, risk workshop, uh, you can take your risks and add them to the system. Risks, uh, this is the very basic risk register view, and they haven't been assigned yet. Um, <clears throat> the integrated risk register is the focal point of the risk management capabilities. Each risk in the risk register has the following. It has properties who, what, when, where, and how. It can have risk, assi assignment, risk assignment. Risk assignment is how the risks are being assigned to the model. Generally, they're gonna be assigned to specific activities, but they could be what we call local risk assignment, or they could be a global risk or systemic risk, and they could be assigned at the project level. They also have a management plan that's centered around what we call the risk mitigation waterfall chart. Uh, risk review, and a risk history. So a risk assignment could look something like this if you're setting it up. Uh, you have a table. We have <clears throat> several activities that we've identified that are going to be affected by these risks. 
And we have these risks, they're just numbered right here, risk one, one to six. <clears throat> and it gives a really nice little, little guide and visualization about how we're going to assign these risks to the schedule, to the uh, schedule and project plan. You can see that some activities have multiple risks. And conversely, risk can be assigned to multiple activities. Risk number five is a weather risk and it's be something, it will be assigned as a global risk to all of the activities. Risk assignment interface. Uh, this is one of the uh, interfaces that you can do the risk assignment, but you can see right here uh, on the left side, there is a list of tasks. Uh, they can be added uh, to this list. Um, and once we've added that, selected one of the tasks, we can then assign them the risks to this. So we select or open, you basically open a risk, uh, go to the risk assignment, assign to tasks and resources, select the risks, that, the activities that you want to assign the risk to, and then we can assign it with a chance, which is probability. Uh, outcome type is what uh, category is going to be affected. Uh, risk category and discount, we've got a fixed delay and a relative cost increase. You can, uh, the outcome type can be, especially for the Monte Carlo, can have a variety of ones, fixed or relative delays uh, and uh, uh, end tasks, cancel tasks, uh, cancel tasks and all successors or another one. For a cost, it's fixed or relative uh, cost increase. On resources, these Activities can also be assigned to resources. So if we want to broadcast, if you have a resource that has a, let's say, a, a, a duration or a cost um, risk assigned to it, impacts to it, you can assign it to a resource and then that risk impacts will be broadcast to all of the activities that resource is allocated to. Uh, resources can also, resource rates can also be risks. So if you have a uh, fixed cost and you, for, for materials and you believe that they're going to have a, there's an uncertainty about what's going to happen. For say, uh, for example, right now we have the uh, issue of tariffs that are um, going on in terms of materials, steel and aluminum, which could in, impact a lot of the projects that could be incorporated into the resource, the cost of that resources, um, that resource rate increase. So there's a lot of flexibility in how you want to be able to assign these risks. Once we've assigned all the risks, we can run it, we run a Monte Carlo simulation. And what will happen uh, with the system, it will basically run uh, probabilistically uh, and it will generate uh, and prioritize automatically the most critical risks. Risk scores and ranking, and ranking uh, there's a color, basically we give a color bar based on what the uh, risks are, what the criticality of them are. And we can then rank them based on their overall impact. It's also possible to slice and dice the impact based on cost, finish times, uh, duration, uh, and also other, other risk impacts. It could be safety, uh, rep reputation, QHSE, those sorts of things. The key to that is once we run this Monte Carlo, we want to be able to understand and prioritize our risk based on their real uh, objective based on our model impacts on the project. So when we take a look at the project level, the project summary shows the results of the simulation with and without risks. The impact and cost and schedule are shown for optimistic, mean, and pessimistic. Charts can be expanded to show detailed results of the analysis. In this particular example, using the data provided, we found that the project risks represent a 11% cost increase and a 15% schedule increase at the mean level. So they would actually at the, uh, say at the pessimistic level, those, those values could be much higher. 
Resolve Gantz provides a visualization of the project schedule with and without risks. Risk assignment and criticality are shown with arrows on each activity. You can hover over a risk to see specific information on the risk. The cost analysis view provides a cost forecast that compares the original estimate versus the cost forecast. A slide allows you to view the forecast at a specific date. This is shown as current cost in the grid below. Uh, one of the interesting things about uh, when we look at the project cost and how schedule affects it, once a project's underway, perhaps the first warning that you're going to have a uh, cost overrun is when you're scheduled with schedule. So this is uh, risk mani first manifestation of a risk occurring, risk occurring in your project actually occur at the schedule rather than at the cost side. They do will have impacts on the cost, but we're always going to be looking at the schedule to understand where that first initial um, indications or warning signs that there are some problems with your schedule or with your project execution. So once the critical risks have been identified, you can perform risk planning in cases where risks are going to be mitigated, so they're not always going to be mitigated, obviously uh, within, let's say, the PMI framework, we want to, we could avoid or transfer or accept. <clears throat> and normally we see that uh, organizations are going to, have their first strategy is to avoid. Uh, but if you can't avoid and you can't transfer, then you're going to mitigate. Uh, you can use the mitigation waterfall chart to add mitigation activity activities to plan about how to lower the potential effect of the risk on the project. In this view, you can have uh, risk can have a cost. Risk can have a, we, can, we have a cost about the risk. Risk activities can have a, an owner. They can have a changes that we think, believe will happen to the, when they're completed that on the probability or impact, but also risk mitigation plans have a cost. In this one, we can see we have a uh, one, one activity that's going to lower the uh, risk down to perhaps an acceptable level, at least in this. And we can see on the pre and post mitigation cubes <clears throat> where that risk will look, where that risk is going to end up, or we believe it will end up after we uh, complete that mitigation activity. The result of the risk plan, risk plan can be seen in the risk register in the pre and post mitigation risk scores. The plan changes to the risks are also reflected in the risk matrix with an arrow showing how the risk will move on the matrix from the pre mitigation state to the post mitigation state. Once the risk plans have been approved, they can be added into the baseline schedule with associated cost and duration. This, the simulation is rerun with planned reductions to the risk probability and impact due to the mitigation activities, and also accounts for the cost of the mitigation plans. We then have a quantitative comparison of the cost of the project before and after we have managed the risk. In this case, through the risk analysis and management process, we can significantly reduce the potential cost of the risk. In this example, by reducing the expected cost of this one risk, the mechanical problem with the instrument, we were able to bring the potential cost risk exposure down from 11% to 8%. By following this process in all, high priority risk, project teams can significantly improve both the economic feasibility and profitability of your projects.
In addition to the software, we offer an enterprise solution that moves all of the capabilities of the desktop client to the enterprise level. This will provide a portfolio level analysis and reporting on your capital project, as well as an improved collaborative capabilities for your project teams. Which allows you to have what we call prod, uh, project portfolio risk analysis and management. In closing, before I start to answer any questions you may have, we are following this webinar with an email and additional information and a special offer to all of our attendees. If you would like to take advantage of this offer, the email will provide a link that will take you to our online store, or you can reply to the email to talk with one of our team members. As it appears, we don't have any questions at this time. I'd like to thank everyone who attended the, the webinar and look forward to seeing you at one of our future webinars. Thank you very much.